Good morning. Uh, this is not how we wanted to gather today, but we hope to be um, back together real soon. Hope you're staying safe and warm wherever you are. But welcome to worship today at Trinity. And um, just a quick note as we begin this brief uh, time of worship. Um, this week marks our 69th anniversary as Trinity Baptist Church. And as we begin our worship today, uh, we want to take note of that and celebrate what God has done in the life of Trinity, um, what God is continuing to do and will continue to do through Trinity Baptist Church. So I'm going to begin us with a prayer, and then our choir is going to sing. Uh, we, I recorded them in rehearsal Wednesday night. And, uh, and then Ryan is going to share a message with us today. But uh, let us pray together, and as we pray, let's thank God uh, for the journey of faith that is Trinity Baptist Church. Would you pray with me? Lord, we give thanks, for you are good and your love endures forever. We give thanks for the unified journey of 69 years known as Trinity Baptist Church, and for all who have shared in this journey for a season of life. We give thanks for faithful ones who were led to gather, to pray and study, and then to grow a new congregation in this community. We give thanks for pastors, ministers, and staff who have cast a vision for what God could do through Trinity and led us on the path of faithfulness. We give thanks to the Lord for the lives changed, marriages blessed, grief shared, and love sustained through the years within these walls. We give you thanks, O oh God, for mission trips, for children's musicals, for youth choir tours and camp experiences, Bible studies, fellowship meals, and all the other times we have experienced the love of God and warmth of fellowship within this family of faith known as Trinity. And we give you thanks, O oh God, for the continued vision that we have to be your church in this place and time. Our vision is to be more than a refuge. It is to be a revitalizing community where all may be saved, healed, strengthened and equipped to go into the world on active mission for our Lord Jesus Christ. We give thanks to the Lord for he is good, his steadfast love endures forever. We pray this in the name of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen.
hope everybody's staying uh, well and warm at home, and uh, we uh, are glad to be able to share this with you today. I'm going to be reading from 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 1 to 11 today. Now about the gifts of the Spirit, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagan, somehow or other, you were influenced and led astray to mute idols. Therefore, I want you to know that no one who is speaking by the Spirit of God says, Jesus be cursed, and no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different kinds of gifts, but the same Spirit distributes them. There are different kinds of service, but the same Lord. There are different kinds of working, but in all of them and in everyone, it is the same God at work. Now to each one, the manifestation of the Spirit is given for the common good. To one, there is given through the Spirit a message of wisdom. To another, the message of knowledge by means of the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by that one Spirit. To another, miraculous powers. To another, prophecy. To another, distinguishing between Spirits to another speaking in different kinds of tongues, and to still another the interpretation of tongues. All these are the work of one and the same Spirit, and he distributes them to each one just as he determines. Can you think back to Christmas? Did you get any Christmas gifts? What have you done with them since then? Have you worn that article of clothing that you got? Have you played with that toy that you wanted so badly? Have you walked in the new pair of shoes that you had asked for or tried that new kitchen appliance that that you needed for cooking? Have you tried out those gifts that you got or are they still sitting in the box? Today I want to talk about putting our gifts to work. No, you know me, not just the gifts we got under the Christmas tree, but rather the gifts that God has given you and I, the manifestations of the Spirit, as Paul writes. It's in this post-gift-giving season that we come to today's text, and there is a certain irony in this topic that comes not even a month after Christmas. It's almost as if we hear Paul saying, Therefore, since you receive many gifts... What have you done with them? In this post-gift-giving season, we're asked to recognize that the gifts we receive from above are not necessarily those presents wrapped under the tree, but are acts of grace by God. It's always helpful to think back to our setting uh, for the writing of this book in, in, um, in Corinthians, the, reading, the letter that Paul wrote to Corinth. He has in mind the common need of the Christian community. And of course, you remember that one of the main critiques that Paul had of the Corinthian congregation is their inability to basically get along and their inability to live out the essential claims of the Christian community. God gives you gifts, he says, not to single you out for praise and notoriety, but for the building up of the body of Christ, the church. So what are you doing about it? Are you boasting in your gifts? Or are you using your gifts for the glory of God to build up the community? Are you hiding your gifts? Or are you putting them to good use? The situation seems to be that there were some of the Corinthians that were comparing their spiritual gifts and ranking their gifts in terms of importance. The more flamboyant the gifts were, the more elevated status they were often given. The lesser seen gifts were often diminished in their importance. And Paul would have none of it. The Christian community is one body with many members that finds its unity in baptism, he says, and its diversity in the incredible variety of the manifestations of the Spirit. Immediately prior to today's text is Paul's concern for the abuses of the Lord's Supper, If the community of faith is not able to find unity in the most communal demonstration of its identity, he says, what might that mean for other times when when we come together to be the church? 
Paul first admonishes the congregations for its individualistic, individualistic behavior at the meal itself. But then Paul does what Paul does so well. He does not stop with reprimanding them, but rather he calls the Corinthians to remembrance. And he basically says, in recalling Jesus' words instituting the Lord's Supper, he recenters the congregation in Christ and Christ alone. In addition, he writes, For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the Lord's death until he comes. This basically ups the ante even more. The Corinthian congregation needs to be reminded that its birth, its identity, its existence as a Christian community is grounded in Christ alone. The very cross of Christ is at stake when the community of believers gathers without living out the radical equality of a power made perfect in weakness, you might say. And we recall that the divisions and disagreements within the Corinthian church basically become the central purpose of Paul's correspondence with them and spurs them to necessary reflection about their communal behavior. In the wake of the season of receiving gifts for us that so often is focused on, well, what did I get for Christmas? This text also calls us to an awareness of what it means to receive something for the sake of someone else. To accept a gift given to us and thereby saying thank you by putting that gift to work. So what about your gifts today? Paul says that through our baptism, God has gifted us with a variety of gifts. The translation partially misses Paul's point here. It should be something like divisions or distributions or allotments, thus calling attention to the active role of the Spirit. But in any case, divisions is a term belong to wisdom. It is wisdom that gives us the ability to make distinctions and to assess the implications and particularity and differences in the practical real-life applications of these gifts. Paul invites the Corinthians to join him in using their gifts in assessing and living with differences within their community. And he lists out, the, lists out many gifts, wisdom, knowledge, faith, healing, Miraculous powers, prophecy, discernment, speaking in tongues, interpreting tongues. In the book of Romans and the book of Ephesians, we hear even more gifts listed. Things like administration, apostleship, evangelism, exhortation, giving, mercy, leadership, service, teaching, and the list goes on. In other words, God gifts us with more gifts than we could ever imagine. Just like the gifts we received at Christmas, some will be small, others will be large. But all are given with love, and all, Paul says, are important. It's also important to realize that the allotment of the Spirit is not arbitrary or willy-nilly, you might say, but rather they're given with particularity and with purpose for the common good. Of course, you know, that common good is not always transparent. It has to be negotiated, you might say, at times, practiced at times. I also love the English translation in our text today, the word manifestation. It's basically a wisdom term. It calls attention to wisdom's ability to take things that are hidden or mystifying and bring them out into the open for consideration and understanding. It brings light to something, you might say. It acknowledges the presence and activity of the Spirit in a particular gift that belongs to a a diversity of of endowments to the believing community. And that's what I guess what I'm asking us to do today as well, to bring out into the open, to think about what gifts we have and how we're using them. When you think about your own life, where do you see yourself gifted? And where are you putting them to use? Some of you I know are doing that through your careers. 
I've seen folks in our school system who have the gift of administration. This term comes from someone being a shipmaster or a captain. In other words, you have the gift of helping to steer or to rule or rightly govern. You help to guide and direct folks towards a goal or a destination. And think about your own work setting and all the administrative folks that you have in your own company or workplace that help you move forward to a common goal. What about teaching? Our teachers have had to adapt and adjust in amazing ways the last couple of years. And these folks have that gift of being able to form the minds of our children and youth of our community. Helping them to think rightly, you might say, or to grow in their understanding of themselves and the world. What a gift it is that God has given each of you to do just that. Or how many of you have the gift of exhortation or encouragement? I was thinking just this week as I was thinking about the church's anniversary, 69 years of all the different folks that have come through Trinity Baptist Church and been folks of encouragement. And I thought about folks in my years of ministry who maybe have written me a note of encouragement or spoken a kind word. How appreciative I've been of folks along the way who, who have said thank you for coaching my kids or have recognized the time and effort uh, that I've put into different endeavors like that. I've seen the gift of healing in a lot of ways this past year. Yes, particularly through our doctors and nurses and folks in the medical field. But I've also seen the gift of healing through the gift of someone that is willing to sit down and listen. Hear someone's story. Help someone think things through. Those who help to maybe even mend a relationship or to calm a situation those who stick their necks out to help warring groups or warring friends or warring family members for the common good, you might say. And just today, it's the, Deborah sent me the end of the year preliminary report of our financial um, year from 2021. And I was again reminded of so many of you who have given up your money to support the works of the kingdom of God through this church. The gift of giving money, resources, time, effort necessary for the church to carry out its mission. And as I thought about our budget, I immediately thought about our nominating committee. That might be funny to you, but when I think about our budget, I think about the nominating committee and the importance of their work in putting together all the different committees of the church that are the actual people that use the funds of the congregation to do the ministries and missions of the church. And that might be another place that many of you fit in here by serving the local church on a committee. You're helping Trinity Baptist Church to be the hands and feet of Christ in this community and beyond to fulfill our gospel calling in so many different ways. I'm grateful for the many various gifts I received this Christmas, but I have a confession to make. I went in my closet last night, and sure enough, there was the shoe box still closed up. I hadn't put those shoes on and gotten the exercise that I intend to for this year yet. Not doing me much good, is it? But God grants us even greater gifts through the manifestation of the Spirit. Let me encourage you, don't leave them unopened. Get them out. It's time to put them to work. Thanks be to God. Thanks for joining us here at Trinity on this wintry, snowy day. I hope that you have a wonderful, wonderful rest of the day. Be safe and try to stay healthy.